Hey y'all, so we're gonna be talking about my favorite books of 2023. So these are just of the books I've read this year. These are not books that came out in 2023. Some of these came out quite a long time ago, actually. I know when some people do these videos, they like to keep it just to their five star reads. Some of these books are not quite five stars, but they're super close. Like it just didn't feel right to not include them. Every single book I talk about in this video, I highly, highly recommend. And for me, a 4.25 stars or higher, which all these books are, is a really good rating because I'm picky. I'm so picky. And I don't like to give out five stars just to any book. So when it's a five star, you know it's a five star. <laughs> So I started off the year strong with Comanche Moon by Katherine Anderson. This is a series with four different books in them. I'm gonna be specifically talking about the first book in the series, which was definitely my favorite. I also enjoyed the fourth book a lot. The two in the middle, they were okay. But the first book, I feel like if you're gonna read any of these, read that one. So this book is from 1993. And there's just something so special to me, in my mind, about books written in the 90s. I cannot explain it. There's just like a little air around them. It doesn't make sense. 90s books are special to me, especially 90s romance books, especially 90s historical romance books. And this one, even better, is a historical Western romance. Love it. This book is about Loretta, who was orphaned at a young age because her family was killed by Comanches. So she obviously feels a certain type of way towards Comanches in general. Mind you, this is also taking place at a time in history where there is a ton of contention between Native American Americans in general and white people, white settlers. Meanwhile, we have Hunter of the Wolf who equally hates white people for his own reasons, which I will let you read about. And they end up having to travel together and Loretta basically has to join the Comanches. I'm not gonna give any details because I feel like those are things that you should read about. But I feel like the best way to describe this book would be just an epic story, an epic love story, an epic story in general. There's so many things about forgiveness, you know, violence and the cost of war war, overcoming hatred, and it's just written so well. It also flows very well. It feels very contemporary for a historical romance. So that is definitely something if you are nervous about, you know, historical romances being kind of difficult to read, this is definitely not one of them. And all in all, it's just such an emotional story. And I just highly recommend it if you're in the mood for something historical and you actually want to learn a lot about Comanche culture. There's a lot of reviews about this book saying that Katherine Anderson actually got a lot of things very historical accurate. Keep in mind this is a fiction book. Obviously take everything you read with a grain of salt. It's best to just read actual history books if you want to learn history, but sometimes you can actually really learn a lot even from fiction books, especially if the authors took their time to really research what they were writing about and she definitely did. So I highly recommend this book. So next we have A Dawn of Onyx by Kate Golden. This book actually kind of took me by surprise. I was not expecting to like it as much as I did when I picked it up. I was just kind of in the mood for some fantasy romance, you know, just good old classic fantasy romance and this absolutely delivered 110 times percent a billion times plus a thousand trillion delivered. I feel like this is like the cheese pizza of fantasy romance. That sounds like it's a negative, but I mean that in the absolute best way possible. It's solid, safe, you know what you're getting into and you're gonna get it. It's, it's gonna deliver. This book follows a girl who ends up getting captured by an enemy kingdom. Kind of captured, kind of taken. I mean, you'll, you'll see when you read it, but she has to go into this enemy kingdom, enemy territory and work as a healer. And this enemy kingdom is notorious for having a terrible, terrible king. But the thing I loved most about this book is how relatable the main protagonist was, which according to a lot of reviews, a lot of people kind of saw her as annoying a little bit, which I just, I did not get that vibe at all. I feel like the way her character was written made complete sense just based on how she grew up. And I just loved the tension and just the slow burn romance element of this book. It was just so good. Highly recommend it. People need to talk about this one more. Next up we have Frost by C.N. Crawford and C. Anne Crawford is actually two people, two authors. So this is another book I was not expecting to like as much as I did. It's a fantasy romance, but you know, most fantasy romance is kind of set in just a complete fantasy world, typically kind of like older-ish timeline, if that makes sense. Like it's not in the modern age. This one actually has a blend of both. It kind of takes place in the modern, our regular normal world, as well as a fantasy fae realm, which is really cool. It kind of reminded me of 
of the cruel prince in that sense. So this book is about a girl who comes home to her boyfriend cheating on her. And on that same day, a Seely King, which is like a Fae King, comes into town and he's basically looking for these Fae girls to compete in his competition to be the next queen. So this world is really interesting because it's kind of like a modernized world that still has some remnants of the old ways and Fae's are kind of integrated into society. So do y'all remember when they did the royal wedding? Like they filmed and like did like this whole thing about the royal wedding. I don't know if y'all remember that. So this book basically does that. So these networks, these human networks are gonna televise this Fae royal competition. It's kind of interesting to read about a Fae world where the Fae's aren't really feared necessarily because they're just kind of a part of society. Definitely like slow, slow burn. I will say the second book, I did not like it as much. I don't really think I enjoyed it. I feel like it was like a three star. It was still decent, but I just had such high hopes, especially from the ending of this first book and the second one didn't fully fulfill, but I still feel like the first book is so good and it's kind of one I want to reread, honestly. I feel like the best way to describe this book in simple terms is The Bachelor meets The Hunger Games televised like the royal wedding. Next up we have Belladonna by Adeline Grace. I feel like this one is kind of leaning towards honorable mention, but still very highly recommended. This book, people either love it or hate it. I personally absolutely loved it. I feel like if you really like gothic style literature and you like things that are like a manor that has kind of a murder mystery going on in the background and you're also learning about these characters who maybe are dealing with grief, who maybe you don't fully understand who they are yet and they're all just kind of living in this house together and it's a little bit creepy. This is the book, but make it fantasy romance. I actually listened to this via audiobook and maybe that's why I had a better experience than some other people. I don't really know. I haven't physically read this one, but the audiobook was excellent. Highly recommend. If you like A House of Salt and Sorrow, which is another book that didn't quite make it to this video, but it's like right there, these two go hand in hand. If you like either or, then you should read the other one. Just saying. And the next book is coming out. It's already out. I have it in my hand. <laughs> What am I saying? And the next book is already out, one I haven't read yet, Foxglove, can't wait. Next up, we have Transcend and Epic by Jewel E. Ann. Jewel E. Ann is one of those authors, and I don't know if y'all ever felt like this before, you read a book and then you're like, dang, I literally wanna go read all of her books because I just absolutely loved the writing style. These books are kind of interesting. So Transcend, it deals with past lives and reincarnation. So basically you have this professor, Nathaniel Hunt, he hires a nanny because he has a newborn baby. Unfortunately, his wife recently passed away and she knows a lot of stuff about him from the past and it's kind of weird. He also recognizes a lot of things in her and it just doesn't make sense. I'm not gonna say anymore because I don't wanna spoil because I feel like this book is really special and honestly really beautiful the way the story is told. I've never read anything like it before, I will say. If you're a contemporary romance fan and you just like romance books in general, but you want something different, something that's not a rom-com, something that maybe has a little bit more emotional depth, then these books are definitely for you. I will say though, they do have a decent amount of spice in them, like kind of more so than your average book. And at times I almost felt like it detracted a little bit from the story because I just kind of wanted to get back to like the juice of the story and what was going on. Next up we have Fable and Namesake. These are two other kind of honorable mentions, but also kind of not. I just had to include these books because I literally really still think about them to this day and I read them in March. So these are young adult fantasy books. They have a very piratey feel, even though they're not actually pirates in this book. They're like traders, like merchant ships. I feel like it's the best way to describe them. But the thing that just stuck with me and literally like just lives on in my heart is the father daughter element in these books. And it just resonated so much with me. These books make me feel something very special. And I just feel like more people need to read them. There were definitely parts of these books that I felt were a little bit slow in terms of the writing style, but just sometimes just like the feeling you get of a book overall, you just kind of ignore the little small stuff that you maybe didn't like fully. Also, Adrienne Young really knows how to write a setting. She makes you taste the salty air, feel the wind in your hair, and just feel like you're literally traveling by ship through the narrows. And these covers are just absolutely gorgeous. Some of my favorite covers of all of the books I own. Love you, Adrienne Young. And also I wanna read your other book, The June Fair 
one. Next we have The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman. He's a very famous person, but I feel like he's famous for things that he did and not his name. And you need to know his name. It's Neil Gaiman. He wrote Coraline. He also wrote Good Omens, which is a TV show. And he wrote this book, The Ocean at the End of the Lane, which I read and loved. I was trying to read books that were kind of shorter at the time. And this was a just short and sweet, really solid fantasy book. It's not romance, but it is kind of a magical realism. If you're into magical realism, this would be a great book for you. And it really touches on the innocence of children and how they may perceive the world and things, very mature adult things. That sounds kind of weird, but you know, just in general, things that as an adult, you would see and understand and be able to just kind of reason what's going on. A child might not. And he's writing through the lens of a child, experiencing these things happening around him. But the way his child brain is processing things is kind of almost like magical realism. And you don't know if it's necessarily true or if it's just maybe the child's way of seeing things through a child's mind. And if you just really want to revisit childhood and also feel kind of emotional about it, this is a great book. Next up we have Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. Honestly, I'm not gonna spend a whole ton of time on this book because you've probably heard of it. And if you haven't, Dragons, Hunger Games meets Harry Potter, but like the Hogwarts part of Harry Potter, you know, like the school aspect of it, meets Akatar, A Court of Thorns and Roses. That's this book. Honestly, I loved it. I loved it so much. I didn't really like Iron Flame that much. And you can watch my whole video on that one. Mind you, it is a spoiler video. This was like the most popular book of the year. And I feel like it was the most popular book of the year for a good reason. And I loved the dragon bonding elements. That was my favorite thing of the book. And it got me out of a reading slump at the time I read it. If you haven't heard of it, if you haven't read it yet, just get in on the hype. And if not, then whatever. <laughs> I don't know it's your life. <laughs> Next up, we have Ender's Game by Orson Scott Card. Y'all, this is literally like all time favorite. If you have a five star shelf, this is like a six star shelf. So I haven't really read a lot of sci-fi and I still haven't since this book, even though this book definitely wanted to make me read more sci-fi. Just the politics surrounding it. Also dealing with these kids who are super, super intelligent. But the way he wrote them, they still feel like kids, which is, I feel like such a difficult thing as a writer. I just absolutely loved this. And I was so hooked from page one, basically seeing Ender and just seeing how his character progressed and how he slowly comes to the realization of things about what he's going through. And then that thing that happened that I don't want to talk about because you need to see what happens. If anything, read this book. So freaking good. So next up we have Where the Stars Meet the Sea by Heidi Kimball. So this is another historical romance. As you know, I love historical romances. It's like my second favorite genre minus fantasy romance. This book is about Juliet, who is literally waiting for her 21st birthday to receive her inheritance so she can kind of do her own thing. But until then, she kind of has to deal with her aunt who isn't really that great of a person. And she has to accompany her to a house party where she meets the Duke of Halstead. And the Duke of Halstead is kind of dealing with some stuff because he recently had an accident. He has a disability and he just doesn't really know how to deal with it and doesn't know how to reintegrate into society properly and he meets Juliet. You gotta check it out because I feel like if you like romance, historical romance and romance just go hand in hand. I'm on a mission to get more people to read historical romance. Next up we have Vampires of El Norte by Isabel Cañas. Let me tell you, her covers are some of my all-time favorite book covers. I also have The Hacienda by her, which I have not read, but I love these covers. So this is a book I read during my vampire book video, <laughs> go check that one out. And I really liked this one because it was completely opposite of what I was expecting. It's marketed as a horror book, but it wasn't really scary, honestly. If you're a scaredy cat and you don't like horror, but you kind of want to like dip your toes in it, it's, it's not scary. Trust me, you'll be okay. <laughs> this takes place in the 1840s on the Texas-Mexico border and you're following Nena and Nestor and their love story is just... But the thing that's interesting about this book is that it is definitely a beautiful love story, but it's also a magical realism book, but also it's historical. So it's really cool. And it's also Western. So there's a lot going on, but in a good way. There's also vampires in this book, but they are not your traditional vampires. They're kind of more like monsters and they're kind of just like this presence in the background while the real issue at hand is the ongoing war. It's definitely one of the most unique books 
I've ever read. Which brings me to my next book, The Beautiful by Renee Agie, one of my all time favorite authors. I love her writing style. I just absolutely love her books of the like two I've read. <laughs> But she's another one of those authors. Remember I talked about Jewel E. Ann where you just like wanna read all their books? She's one of them. I wanna read all her books. I love them. This is a young adult historical kind of fantasy, but like it leans more fantasy, but like honestly it's vampires. So think Interview with a Vampire by Anne Rice, but make it young adult. This is the book. So you're following Celine, who's a French girl who has to flee Paris and move to New Orleans, basically without her family, without anybody by herself. And she joins this nunnery and kind of the, the whole deal with the nuns is she works for the nuns and they will help her find a husband and just kind of reintegrate herself into society in New Orleans. But she ends up coming across this group of people who are kind of different than the norm and she can't fully figure out what's up with them. Renee, you do such a good job of talking about vampires without ever talking about vampires. Like you know they're there and the signs are there but she never just comes out and says what they are. You kind of have to inform Infer, and I kind of like books that trust the reader to infer things like you she knew that we would be smart enough to figure out what they were and I like that next up we have one of my new all-time favorite six star reads good night beautiful and this is a thriller oh my gosh y'all I don't even know what to say I have never been as shocked by a plot twist as I have during this book I feel like this is the type of book that even if you go in knowing that there's a plot twist you will never see it coming oh it's one of those books it's it's so well written and there's definitely signs there. Like it's it's not out of nowhere, but like you'll still never see it coming. This just slapped me across the face in a good way. I literally had to stare at the page for like 10 minutes because I could not process what I just read. I literally had to go back and be like, did I just read what I just read? This is a thriller. It follows a husband who is a psychiatrist and he takes clients in his house in the downstairs kind of basement area that he turned into his office. And you have his lonely wife who is listening through the vent. And I feel like this book single-handedly made me want to read more thrillers. Next I have How I Met My Soulmate by Anna Sheen. And this was actually an advanced reader's copy, even though it's already out, but I got it via NetGalley. So thank you so much to NetGalley and Kodansha for allowing me to read this advanced reader's copy in exchange for an honest review, which is what this is. It's an honest review. And y'all, this was good. I feel like if you have never read manga before or if you're kind of dabbling and you love romance this is like literally a romance lover's dream so this manga follows a 20 year old girl who's basically kind of sworn off romance but she ends up going to this bar with her friend and she meets this guy there they don't really have a good first impression to be honest but throughout the story you kind of get to know him better and honestly I don't know what to say other than just this is just like classic romance vibes if you're a fan of the romance genre in general then you would absolutely Absolutely love this and even if you've never read manga before I feel like this is a very easy transition to manga and also don't be afraid of manga because it's honestly really easy to read because it's mostly pictures last but not least we have if he had been with me by Laura Nolan and this is probably my most recent favorite five star I had been in a contemporary romance specifically young adult contemporary romance drought I keep wanting to read it because I want to find books that I like in that genre but it just doesn't fully resonate with me and it just doesn't feel like it's my favorite genre no matter how hard I try but this book this one seeped through the cracks it's a young adult it was angsty it was emotional it was profound there was metaphors for depression and other mental health issues it is very teenager you know like you kind of feel like a teenager again reading this book but the way she wrote it was not very childish either there was a lot of real stuff that happens in this book and they they tell you the end of this book at the very beginning and then you go through the events that happened prior to it but you kind of forget and then you're kind of questioning if it's still gonna even happen oh man this is an emotional one this is a sad one don't go in expecting lovey-dovey cute but her writing style the way she was able to write this in an immature but like on purpose way while still feeling very mature like you you could understand the characters perspectives as they went through high school and you could kind of see what they were 
they were going through, especially at the ages they were in. So well done. And she has another book coming out from one of the characters perspectives in this book, I think either this month or next month, really soon. And I can't wait. So this book follows a girl who is kind of different than other people in her age group, in her school. And she's kind of always been different, but at one point she kind of fell into the popular crowd in middle school and ended up falling away from them and just kind of does her own thing now in high school. And she finds her own friend group and they kind of give me emo vibes, which I really dig, but they're just different and they do their own thing and they like march to the beat of their own drum, which is kind of cool. But her childhood best friend who she's kind of had a falling out with is a part of the super popular preppy kids. And you're kind of following that whole dynamic. She also lives literally next door to him, but it's not like they hate each other or anything. They just kind of have drifted apart. So it's really interesting. And I love kind of seeing that and just seeing the whole high school vibes. Like I said, it makes you feel like you're back in high school and that's kind of fun in a fiction book. All right, y'all. Well, thank you so much for watching. Let me know your favorite book of 2023 down in the comments below and I will see you next time.